Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Greg. Uh, this is a Lost Wrench Garage, and today we are going to be buttoning up the back end of the Spitfire, install some shocks, and possibly, hopefully, get brake lines taken care of. So hang around. Let's do this. Yeah, I went and ordered from Moss Motors uh, new rear shocks. They are the stock uh, replacement because I'm not going for uh, any kind of major performance. Just something to get around. And plus, like I said, this is a budget build. It's a preservation not a restoration but they're looking pretty decent Shay. all right we'll get these installed and then uh also i got new interior as you've seen in the one video i redid the door card i still haven't put that back out of the way so it don't get hurt or even started on the other door which i need to do but I got new seat covers from a, a, a member of the uh, Triumph Restoration Group on Facebook. And I was looking at seat covers and I was, uh, uh, Moss, you know, I'm sorry, but we're on a budget. I can't afford to buy a pair of seat covers for a car. Which are going to be, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> a couple hundred dollars or so just for the covers. And then if you need foam, right, there's another two. So you, could get, you can get close to, you know, five to seven hundred dollars wrapped up in a pair of seats. No, uh -uh. ain't gonna happen. But I got them seat covers from uh, Jeffrey Costin Batter. He's over in uh, Ripsonia, PA, and uh, I got them the other day. I'll have to get them out to show you. Pretty nice, real nice. They're, they're, they sell them on Amazon or eBay. I think it's eBay. Or, Am yeah, eBay. And so I put up a question on the group site. Does anybody use this type of seat cover? And he replied back and then messaged me and says he has a, he has a pair that he was going to use, but he went a different direction and color on his car, so he has them sitting around. And so I got them for a real good deal. And then I realized oh, I need uh, hog rings, and uh, so he's seen that I posted up that on there that. Now I need to go get order up some hog rings, and because uh, I did have some, but I don't have enough. And uh, he just gracefully sent me a package with hog rings. Now that was cool of him. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff. I do really appreciate that. Uh, and I found my pair of hog ring pliers. Uh, I used these back a while back to do a buddy of mine's truck seat, and uh, they, I put them back in the package and stuck them away, and I, I know I had it, so I just dug around and, and uh, found them. I did get from Harbor Freight a electric uh, starter button for the Triumph so that you don't have to reach in turn the car, you know, bump the car over or anything. It's like, it's like $8. So I snagged that up. And I got to do some work on my truck. I got to pull and flush the heater core. So I grabbed this tool. Hopefully it'll do the trick. But let's take these and get these on. Yeah, all I have is this nut, just hand snug down there, just to uh, 
so it doesn't get lost. And uh, we're going to slip that bolt out, get the new shock up in there. Take this uh, nut off. Nothing washer. <coughs> so we're we're good to go. And then, if you remember back in one of the last videos, which you can't see, I have broken the line that goes to the distribution block right there. So I need to get that off, make a new line, and uh, I would like to put a new line going over to the other side. Uh, I have to crawl up under there anyways to attach the uh, to, to the depth and I want to check the fluid in it and all that and so that's going to be in the works so I want to try and set you up so you can see what I'm up to here I need to get my and I see it too. Son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs> there she is. What a pain in the ass. Brand new. Nice and pretty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Hopefully, line up. Yeah, just took some fighting with it. I needed both hands and I needed as much room as I could. But I am going to put some more in, I see. Where the nut goes. this I was going to replace this upper bolt but it's a spe specially she uh, got a special uh, shoulder on it and that wouldn't work so and these flex heads this is just a cheap pair it's who makes some husky? Uh, you got to get yourself a pair, even if they're straight. These are these pivot, so you can get in at different angles, which I really like. So the tools are always a good investment. Save you, saves you so much time instead of reaching. Taking a wrench on, off, on, off, on, off. Oh my lord. Now we're starting to tighten down. We're moving the top or the other end of the bolts. Top's done. Now try to get the bottom on. 
I already put the NICs on the shaft. There's no steel ferrule that goes through these. So, that don't make a difference. It's just going to help it slide on. Well, maybe not. Because... Well, maybe it will if I can. I need to lift the. Oh, I got shit all over me. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, you play with NICs, you're going to get it on you. So that's that simple. He looked like the Tin Man. <laughs> well, we got it started. I'm thinking I might have to go and do the uh, attach him to the deck first. Boy, maybe I should have lifted this up higher. <laughs> it's kind of tight under here. But I'm having a heck of a time. I got two or three of the bolts tight. But you, the bolts go in from the differential out toward the axle. And you got to get all the bolt heads through the flange uh, so that you can rotate to get to the other bolts so you got to slip them over all full all all you know they'll reach up top and move them in and then rotate tighten rotate tighten because the pitch of the u-joint coming out of the dip is at an angle and you get no it gets in the way to where you you can't get the box end. You got to use an open end on one end, one side on the nut on the bolt head side, and on the nut you got to use box end, and the huge weight's in the way. So you got a certain little spot, little sweet spot, to where you can get it on and off. And a ratchet. Uh, these are nine sixteenths, by the way. And a ratchet nine sixteenths head is too thick. It won't reach. It won't get in between the u-joint knuckles so yeah we'll keep at it and get her done get her but now let's see if we can get this oh, yeah yes that did make a difference with uh the uh <sighs> Because it just wasn't enough, it wasn't far enough that way. So that's a good thing. Now, put the washer on. Oh, uh, where'd it go? There it is. This, just, this stuff, I'm telling you, please go ahead and use it. I mean, You will not regret it the next time you decide you're going to change the shocks or need to do something underneath to get it. Okay. It must not be three quarter. It's a nine sixteenths. Well, well, guess what? I need to get a get a the right size wrench. Okay. That take. So that was five eighths. What? Three quarter. Too big. Eleven sixteenths. 
or is it metric? You can never tell me that you, you've gone done that many a times, huh? Usually I can eyeball about what size it is, but oh well. By the way, it's 11 sixteenths. There we be. Now it's just that brake line. I might just wait to do that another day. Uh, clean up the tools here. And there she is. Well, I still need to at attach the brake cable and the spring, which I'll do right now. I have the spring right here. So... We'll put that uh, on there, and uh, I might as well um, put a tire on it, because I would, I would love to start seeing that, hey, it's get to the point to where it's going to be on the ground, and uh, be able to move it in and out, move it over. Whatever I need to do, I need. I want to get some wheel dollies, which would be nice, because I can always get to that brake line from uh, inside here, hopefully, uh, which, yeah, I can work at it from here. Just pull the tire back off, jack it up, be able to get to it from here. So, that's a good thing. We'll wait on that. But, yep. I'm feeling better. I'm going to get this brake uh, emergency brake uh, connected. Okay. Got that hooked up. And the thing I had to do, though, is I had to take it apart. I had to pull the, uh, unscrew. There's a locking nut back here. And then there's a nut on this, this side of the bracket. I had to break that loose, clean all the threads because I had to get this nut off because this bracket was facing that way, not this way. And there's no way you can hook the spring on it into, unless it was in a bind. So somebody put that on wrong, so I fought with that for a while. But we got her back together, and uh, she's the spring's just barely got tension. Uh, well, that's probably why, because it wasn't in this bracket here. But uh, that spring is just so that it, it brings it back whenever you pull the cable to set the brakes. It, it draws it back. And I may have to re do some adjusting here, but that'll be later once ever I get to the point to where I get the other side together. And I can adjust the, uh, I can adjust the parking brake, but you can adjust it also right there. So it's like a fine tuning type thing. Yeah, let's see. Get that to set up on there. And the thing about these they uh the center cap they hit the center caps so i didn't care for that and uh i don't even think they're the correct Not for these wheels. They need they need cleaned up. They're gummed up bad. I just I'm gonna be pulling this wheel back off again soon, anyways. Like I said, I just want to get it to the point to where I can move the vehicle. This 
So we've got a lot more going on. I don't like the way that's going on. Come on. I want to, uh, I want to change out the uh, stud to, uh, to uh, ro Land Rover studs. I want to do the Rover conversion. Yeah, see, it just stops right there. So I think I might have cross threaded. I think I cost threaded the stud, uh, the, not the lug nut. So let me grab another lug nut. And I'll put this one off to the side so I know this is the bad one. So if any of you know, what these studs were from. They got a hole in the bottom, which I don't understand why. It may be a relief that goes all the way through. I don't know. But if these look familiar, uh, leave it in the comments. Definitely that. That, uh, definitely that nuts or okay. Well, there you go. One shock on. Fix the cable, put the tire on, which now it's starting to look back like a car again. But uh yes I still got interior welding to do and i've just been doing so many other things uh like the door card which is done i still need to do this side which i'll probably get into that and then i got to do electrical uh, the seat covers uh, get a carpet kit put that in i'm going to put new kick panels in on both sides up back here uh, the back panel that runs along here uh, it's gonna look fairly decent the dash does have a crack in it by the but I may just leave it it's character it's not real bad but the main thing is getting it on the road that's the trick and then I gotta fix the exhaust which is out in the uh, outer building and Front brake, front brakes and pads and the bearings. And so we got a lot going on. Now there you go. Got one side done. Now I got to do the other side. Now at least we got the axles bolted to the dip. Got to get that chalk on. I'll check that brake cable. I got to fix that brake line. And other than that, I think I'm pretty good shape. Uh, I want to run new fuel line. From the back to the front because i don't care for that plastic stuff and i don't know true i haven't been on anything i really didn't look and see if it was it's only plastic so far i'd rather have steel uh well copper and it'd be i want to have that worry you know about breaking a line get the front done start on that pretty soon but hey yeah nice short little video i hope uh now I got to start on the new, the other door cards and interior. But yeah, I'm, I'm keeping busy. But hey, I do appreciate you guys hanging out for the whole time throughout the video. If you did hang this far, uh, why don't you leave a comment? Why don't you subscribe? Uh, also, give me a, uh, a 
fake thumbs up and not the finger. I want you to go check out this video. We'll catch you on the next adventure.